welcome back to Vigor. It is your boy, Stealth Jet, leader of the JSS. People, I think I said this before in a recent video, but I don't bring out the good stuff unless I'm having a really bad time in the game. And so, I'm bringing out a Remington 870. I believe I am. Usually, I bring out a Spas 12. Usually, I would bring out a Spas 12. But, the 870 has better range, from what my viewers have told me. So, I mean, hey, a shotgun that can, like, shoot at you from, like, 20 yards away? Why not? You know what I'm saying? Why not? We're going to arrive on Bridal and Bridges, and of course, with my luck, it's going to be at night. Of course it is. So I'm going to pose to you all a question. Which would you rather have five games straight on? Knight's VL Hunting or Knight Bridges? I would say Bridges because at least you have cover. But I get the feeling that the more, uh, how can I put it? The challenge hungry amongst you. The, you know, y'all with the big egos. Y'all will say night field content because y'all know for a fact that the danger is ramped up because you can't, you cannot see shit on a map where there's virtually no cover. At least here, we have houses. But those houses can be a curse too because somebody can be hiding in those houses. And yeah, I spotted a troll right there for you all in case you haven't found all the trolls just yet. So that's my question to you all. You can answer it mentally or you can answer it in the comment section down below. But I would take Night Bridges purely because there is cover. But at the same time too, we all seen that this is Vigor in 2022 video that I released. Um, Yeah, I, I still have PTSD from that. I still do. So this is not your regular running gun kind of gameplay. Whenever I bring radiation grenades, and that's a KK going off in the background, and that's my phone going off in the background as well. Whenever I bring out a radiation grenade, it's going to be some thoughtful gameplay. I'm not going to just run around and shoot people because, like, that's some level one gameplay shit. Me, I like to make things dangerous. I like to prey upon people's actions that they think are regular ass actions for example going for the airdrop i mean look if you don't know what i'm going to do by this point literally there's a video on my channel entitled and that kk is going ham right now there's a video on my channel entitled this is how i use radiation grenades and vigor if you don't know check that video out because it'll give you literally everything you need to know about how I use these grenades. So I'm going to that bad boy right back there, let it explode or whatever, and get out the blast radius. Okay, cool. But then somebody uses the jammer, not the jammer, the tower, which is basically a really big stationary jammer. And I run out a circle and I check the tower is behind the airdrop. And given how that car alarm is going off and it's in front of the tower 2 plus 2 equals 4 somebody's heading this way now how dangerous are they what are they carrying is it a sweat I don't know well I guess how dangerous they are and are they a sweat are the same question but you get my point I don't know what the hell they got going on so I'm gonna take cover and watch them as they hopefully pass by and I got an 870 on me and in my opinion shotguns are the best weapons to take out sweats with because body armor and yeah that's what I believe here he comes
look, in my defense, you see that mission right there? Yeah, I need that to be done. That's a really close VZ-58 from what it sounds like. But yeah, I need that mission to be done. So, that's that. Did it take me like three laps around the house like it was a Nuremberg ring? Yes. But was the mission done though? Exactly. So, we see somebody buffed the airdrop. So, more than likely, somebody's going to go for it, right? More than likely. Now, I'm going to run down here. Because, if there's one thing that I like to do, is check the map and see if there's anybody doing anything suspicious. While heading for another comm station. Because, like I said, this is not no regular run and gun gameplay. There's some thought behind it. But then this happens. One could argue, one could argue, if I had a VSS, an LD6, an HBRT, I would have got them outside the container. One could argue. But, I don't have any of those weapons. I just have a Remington. The best shotgun in the game. So, I had to do what I had to do. I had to take this risk. I had to peek around the corner. But here's what I didn't expect he must have either heard me or seen me walking up at the last second and thought he was going to get ambushed off on me he was already turned around and waiting for me to peep around the corner so either he was checking his map and just so happened to face where I was coming toward or he knew what was up it's kind of alarming isn't it but the end result is He's dead, and I'm not. And I have the container looted XP in my little XP bank, and it's going to show up if I die or leave. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm up here, and I check my inventory. I'm like, wait a minute. I did find a picture. So I turn my ass around, and I head back down the hill, and I'm going to attempt to find this picture. Legit, I forgot I found that picture, guys. I really did. So, I headed up this hill for absolutely no reason. I mean, if you say the words comm station, I mean, sure, yeah, but I just came from one to get down to the container. Wouldn't it be easier for me just to go back the way I came? And again, you can say yes to that, but there's one rule, I believe... Uh, espionage specialist aka spies use you never go in where you came out and you never go in, go out where you came in in other words your entrance should be different than your exit in any given scenario so what I just said was I don't want to go back up the exact same hill I came down you know what I'm saying the whole point of a map is to use it not to take the same path back and forth and or sit in a bush and wait for something to happen with your SVU behind the detector on sawmill. Use the map. So, you know, I'm up, I'm up the hill now and things are going relatively well. You know, don't hear any sounds. Don't hear any footsteps. The airdrop's still on the ground. Everything seems to be normal.
What is that one thing I always tell you all? What is that one sentence that I always tell you all? Oh yeah. Gunshots attract players. And you see, that exact situation right there. If he would have caught me about, what, two, two and a half years ago, he would have killed me. He would have. But, like I was saying, that exact situation right there made me adapt the headshot only mentality. But, I can't headshot. I have a shotgun. I can aim for the head, or I can be really close. Well, I, wait, I can aim for the head, but it probably won't go for the head. The shell won't. But if I had anything that's direct fire, like this Magnum, or like this G3, I could have had shot him in the head. But I don't. So, and when I say I don't, I mean I didn't have the weapon to headshot the guy that shot at me first. So, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Now, there's, there's a guy up there with a KK. And uh, KKs are the equivalent of like, let me think, like 10 SKSs shooting at you at one time. So, um, yeah, that, that that's not fun. That's not fun. And all I have is a shotgun, a slow firing assault rifle, and a magnum. The magnum is going to take me time to aim because the crosshair, well, the iron sight is so tiny against the dark background. The G3, while the iron sight is great, the recoil is going to mess me up. And yes, I have a shotgun, but you seen how you seen how far I was from old boy. I couldn't make that work. So I'm going to play to my advantages. He seen me get up and walk away down the hill to his right. And then I turned around and headed, and headed to his left. But I have two things on my on my side right now. The element of surprise and that airdrop. So I'm looking at the map and I realize that the tether is back that way. So a bit of psychological warfare here. If I hit the detector, he's going to think, oh, he's not here. Let me go for the airdrop. He's going to go for the airdrop and incur a large dosage of spicy air and become even easier to kill, body armor or not. I didn't shoot at him. I don't know if he has any body armor. You know what I'm saying? So, with that in mind, I'm going to do exactly that. But, I get a pit, oh, I get a bit, excuse me, of PTSD. Because you see this very ominous looking bush right here? Yeah, I'm gonna... Nobody's in there. Okay, cool. So, hit, hit the detector. And it turns out that they're both leaving. The guy that shot at me and somebody else who was near a time safe. So, to apologize to this, to, to this poor bush that I melted, I'm gonna put my knee in it several times and leave so what is there to learn from this encounter number one just because you don't hear anything it don't mean that nobody nobody's around number two pay attention to your surroundings not your immediate surroundings but shit that's on the map because i guarantee you i guarantee you homeboy with the kk was just so happened to be there because he was watching for the airdrop. And number three, and this is very situational, remember what you heard. Think about it. When I killed that raincoat and started heading down that hill, didn't we hear one single VZ-58 shot? I could be wrong about that weapon dosage or that weapon diagnosis, but we heard one shot from a weapon as I was going down that hill and that was roughly where I got ambushed at. Hmm. And well, it was. It's almost like I should be more careful when approaching any given area in this game. And you should be too. I'll be sure to catch y'all in the next episode. Until then, peace.